Every woman wants them. Mind-blowing, toe-curling orgasms. But let's face it, not all of us are having them. But there are ways to increase our orgasmic capabilities and bring more of that ultimate pleasure into our lives. I'm Dr. Logan Levkoff, and I'm going to tell you what those are on Mom Ed in the Bedroom. Hi, thanks for joining me. This episode is all about maximizing your sexual pleasure, which for most of us means having more orgasms. But it can also mean having an orgasm if you've never experienced one at all. My good friend and fellow sexologist, Megan Andiu, is here to join me. Thanks. So, Megan, I want to start with a basic biology lesson. Okay. Where do orgasms come from? So, orgasms come from a buildup of sexual tension in the pelvic region. Very clinical language. Um, usually, they come from erotic stimuli, also nipple play, touching the clitoris, which you have this handy-dandy vulva puppet here, yes. And so clitoris would be right here. Although actually most clitoral owners like to have their clitoris touched through their hood versus the actual It's very clitoris. well accessorized, mm -hmm. as you can see. Yes. I'm partial to this idea that most women don't know about, that when a woman is really ready to have sex, her body tells her so, right? Because the labia spread open. Open. Open for business. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we, But most of the time, we never even get to that point. Right. I have to say, I have this big pet peeve with how we talk about women's orgasms. This debate about clitoral, G-spot, vaginal, what's better, what's worse, why do we care? I understand the frustration. I'm like, why can't we just enjoy the fact that we're having an orgasm? Why do we have to give it a special spot with a special location so that people need a map to play as opposed to are you enjoying your body? Are you enjoying the sensations? If you get off through vaginal penetration, that's great. If you only get off through clitoral, that's great. Right, one is definitely not inferior to the other. And no. I think that sometimes we're made to feel that way, that we can be more advanced at having orgasms. And obviously the purpose of this conversation is to get us to realize that orgasms are orgasms and we're never really measuring the last one against the one we just had. We're kind of just enjoying the whole the whole ride. Yeah, that's how it should be. So let's talk about some of the, the conversations the Cafe Mom community has been having. And one of the questions that I received is, is it possible to become multi-orgasmic if I'm a one kind of orgasm woman? That's a really great question, very common. And I think I would like to first tweak the language a little bit. And as opposed to calling it multiple orgasms, call it serial orgasms. Because people think multiple orgasms and they're like, bam, 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 bam. And that's not how most orgasms happen, because there needs to be a buildup of tension. But serial orgasms are bam, 10 minutes later, bam. <laughs> and it's like great Sunday sex. So right. basically, if you, if you do your homework and you relax, you could be serially orgasmic. Yes. And, and let's focus on masturbation for mm -hmm. a second. And, and in particular, one of, I think, the greatest products known to womankind, the vibrator. Fantastic. Over 50% of women have used them at some point in their life, and 80% of these women use them with partners. Right. So why do vibrators get such a, a bad rap, you think? I think that the number one reason is fear of, I'm going to burn my genitals out so that I won't be able to have orgasms the regular way. And so that fear prevents people from feeling comfortable using them. But vibrators are a time-saving tool. They help us get off quicker or have more intense orgasms, and they work wonders for that. Let's talk about a group of women who are important in this discussion. The women who no longer have orgasms or have never had an orgasm before. Mm -hmm. what, what's the biggest issue? Biggest issue that they tend to be facing is they are fearful of how their face is gonna look, they're fearful that somebody's gonna be able to tell, they don't wanna lose control of their body, um, they have guilt associated with masturbating or letting go and being that vulnerable with their partners. And what about lack of foreplay in all of this? Oh yeah, that would <laughs> <laughs> that would help. Um, having actually foreplay in which I, I tend to say that's how most women get off is what's deemed as foreplay. 
Um, it's the kissing, the fondling, the grinding, the oral, all the good stuff. And 70% of women don't have regular orgasms from intercourse alone, meaning it is all that other outside fun right. stuff that counts. And right. for the women who have never experienced an orgasm before, I think it's important that there are some medical conditions and medications associated with this that we never talk about. Right. So diabetes, antidepressants, multiple sclerosis, pelvic trauma, surgery are all things that women should really be you know, bringing these issues up with their doctor because pleasure is important right. and a part of our sexual health, but we often don't share that with our doctors. And our doctors don't necessarily share that with us, so the hormonal forms of birth control can really reduce the ability to have orgasms and desire. That well, hopefully get now women will be asking all of those questions and getting more of the pleasure that they deserve. Absolutely. I wanted to see how my fellow moms here in New York felt about orgasm, so I asked them to define good sex. Check out my Mom on the Street report for Mom Ed. So what does good sex mean to you? We talk about good sex all the time, but what, what is it? I think it's, I, at this time in my life, I think it's about connection more than anything else and it being, just being in sync with each other. Um, life is so crazy being a parent that when you make the time to be intimate, it should be, you should feel connected and it shouldn't be a quick little, you know, romp in the bedroom. Um, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I mean, it has to be about pleasure. It's so interesting that so many of these women talked about reconnecting with their partner mm -hmm. as the key to good sex. Mm -hmm. I would say that and a little orgasm goes a long way too. Big thumbs up. Megan, women always want to know what will help them get to orgasm easier and quicker. What, what would you say is a good tip? I would recommend fantasizing, purchasing a vibrator, getting in different positions, rocking your hips, getting the energy moving, um, letting sound come out of your mouth. So those are some quick tips that I would recommend. Megan, thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks to all of you. Did any of our tips help you on your quest for the ultimate sexual pleasure? Be sure to leave a comment and subscribe to Cafe Mom Studios on YouTube. Check us out. Don't miss a single episode. Get lots of tips from me and my guests on Mom Ed in the Bedroom. Yeah.